Hello and welcome to this video on the SPT framework. This is video number five of the SPT framework series and today we're going to be looking at the component or the component base which is the basic block of the SPT framework. We're going to use it to create a very simple sample. This is effectively your hello world for the SPT framework video series. Let's get started. So for those of you that joined us in video four you'll remember the last step we made was to add the SPT libraries into our repository within the Twinkat environment so we can actually use that then for programming. So the first thing we're going to do is right click on our references and we're going to add a library. Now when you do this you will navigate down to the SPT libraries and in there you will find the base types. This is the first library you must add with an SPT framework project. Okay, And then there are others, we'll come on to those in later in the video series. This is our first one. So let's add that and there we see that in our Twincat project. Okay, now if we double click on that, that will open up the library for us and we can explore what's in this library. This is a effectively a quick start video, so we just want to get something up and running so you can see how this um, process unfolds or how the basic blocks of the library are used. So all we're gonna do is have a quick look inside the component base folder and in there you'll see the FB underscore component base. If you remember back to the framework video, this is the basic object of the SVT framework that you use to form the objects you're going to create in your machine. So your flow meters, your axes, etc. Okay. Now we don't instance this block directly. Um, it is part of a system of inheritance. Remember that back to the um, video we did on OOP. We are going to create a block that inherits from this. Okay. And therefore this one we create will have all of the capabilities that are baked into the component base um, class inside the SPT framework. Okay, so what we're going to do is right click on the POU folder and we're going to add a new POU. We're going to select the type of function block, although in the object oriented sense we would refer to this as a class. Okay, so highlight that. We're just going to call this flow control because we don't need to um, create anything uh, large on our first go. This is basically just going to sit there and count up, measure something uh, for a flow meter possibly, and it's going to make decisions based on that that are going to be passed up the system as we go through. So once you've done that, select your preferred language. I'm going to use structured text here. And once you've done that, the critical thing to not forget at this point is to check this extends box. This extends box is how Twincat refers to inheritance. So by clicking this extends box and inserting the FB underscore component base, that tells Twincat that when you will create this flow control class, you want it to bring in all the functionality from component base so that it inherits from it and gives us that selected functionality that's been created for you by the creators of the SBT framework. Once you've done that, click open and we can move on. Once that's open, we're then going to create a very simple counter. It's nothing um, special, which is going to effectively increment a counter so you can see this um, block in operation. Um, and we can make sure they're actually calling something and it is in fact working as desired. So all I'm going to get you to do is on the flow control block we've created, right click on it and we're going to add a method. When that dialog box opens, you can obviously write the name of method yourself. But if you click the drop down list, you'll notice there's a series of methods that have already been predefined. Now those have come from the component base. Those are the inherited um, features, the inherited capabilities of the block that our flow control now has because of its in inheritance from the um, component base class. Now I want you to select the cyclic logic and then click OK. What we're going to do here is what we refer to as overriding a method. So we're going to take the cyclic logic as defined in the component base and we're going to add some extra functionality from our side to make it do what we want it to do. Now, in our cyclic logic method, all we're going to do is write a single line of code, i counter is equal to, or is assigned to, i counter plus one. We're just going to increment a counter. That's all we're going to do. We're going to pretend for the moment that this is some counter signal coming in from IO that's going to increment, and we would make decisions on that um, in our real system. But at the moment, we just want to prove that this all works for you. Okay? Remember when you um, click off the line, it will um, or return, it will auto declare this I counter for you. Remember to select the scope of the class itself. Don't declare this inside the method, declare it inside the function, the class itself, and um, it will then be retained through PLC cycles. Okay, and that's it. That's our component finished. This is our 
very basic first component. Now we actually want to do something with this, obviously, it's a pointless exercise otherwise. So we're going to call this in main just to get it going. So in main, all I'm going to get you to do is create an instance of this um, thing you've just created, this flow control. I'm going to call my flow controller. Um, and that's of this type flow control. Now you won't be able to instance the FB component base. That is designed to be inherited from, not created and used in, in itself. And we'll come back to that when we look a bit further into the um, object oriented nature of the SBT framework as these videos carry on. And then all you have to do to get this to run is in your um, programming area, just type in flow controller dot and then cyclic logic and then make the call on the method and that's it. We can then log into our running system, deploy the code and if you put the system into run I can then open the method and you'll see it counting away. Okay that's the equivalent of hello world for the SVT framework, it's the simplest component I could think of for this little video series. Now you may be wondering why we have done a um, why we're calling a method and not the body of the, the class. Most of you will be used to creating a function block and then calling the function block itself. Um, there are um, <clears throat> reasons for doing this and we're going to cover those in the next video. So in this video we've learned how to create a component based off the com from ourselves, create off the component base object of the SVT framework and we've learned how to call it um, in our program and we're going to come back to that um, in the next video. Thank you.